in this video I want to go through this digital asset I created what I call wire builder so let's go through it with the base options and then I'm gonna show then I'm going to dive in and show how can you customize it so first of all when you open it it should look like something like this maybe a little bit different so there are two different wire styles the one is with the four wires inside, another one is with just a simple one. So let's stick with the zero. First of all, you can set a resolution for this curve. That's pretty simple. So, and then in the wire style control, basically the option is going to change whether you are style one or two. So let's keep it on one at zero and you can control the twist, partial twist and the roll. Then you can change the resolution of each circle. Let's keep it something small. Then you can change the cross section, actually the, the size of a wire that's combined, and also this uniform scale is going to change the individual sizes of, sizes of the wire, so like that. Then you can go into the secondary shape control in here. We also have two options. So when I'm going, when you install, it's going to be set at one because this is going to be because this shape is actually modeled inside the Houdini. These are imported from ZBrush. I'm going to show how can you import them. So, so in here, in secondary shape control, there are pretty simple options. So you can stretch out this change the number of copies you can see if you change the number of copies you can change like that then you can say change the shape so basically you can change the shape of the actual actual shape uh, secondary shape i'm going to show how can you change that and create your own shapes and import them and or create them inside zippers then you can change the scale of it and secondary scale Secondary scale is the one that uses pad deform modifier and uniform is just a modifier so they are a little different and they do scale a little bit differently each so the uniform scale is going to be non it's not going to deform the actual geometry. The secondary scale is kinda can look kinda weird sometimes. So these two and also there are offset of the curves and also scale to length so these are just a path deformer nodes so usually just leave it at this but if you don't if you need something custom you can change this in here and then there are you you can notice that there are actually caps for each of the ends so you can change them so cap one you can change the caps and then you can uniform scale it bigger or smaller and also you can offset them so maybe just inside them like that and then second one is just the same you, they can be different for each one let's keep it at that and also the same control scale and offset so these are going to be the controls what I like to do is just detect the, the this pain and just so when you dive into this, it, this stays open so you can change them and I just put them on the second monitor so you can edit this easily and still you see the see the local options for each node and also you have on the second monitor the base shapes that you're gonna base control that you're gonna change frequently so you can also change them by here so I made them red so everyone that's kind of like this dark green is something that has control in the actual H uh, hit digital asset so you can know that by that by looking at the, at the window that what kind of color it is so what else now let's just take a look at this whole setup I'm gonna show how can you import the, the how can you import from the ZBrush the actual shapes now I'm just gonna go through the basics of this tool so you could import your own 
custom shapes from ZBrush or create them inside the Houdini. So, with the caps, we have to look at this. Basically, this is the Z import. Z. If you want to import, you look at this. And if you want the custom shape, you just put it inside this switcher. So, like here, I have a switcher. So, if I go to the My Options. Basically, it's going to switch between these my switcher so these are just the shapes i created in inside houdini if you do not have imported from the from the zbrush if you want to import them from the zbrush there are a couple of things you have to know first of all all of the shapes you want to copy has to be on a positive z axis that's very important so when you inside the z gonna go inside the zbrush so inside i just have a basic insert mesh brushes and I what I did I just put them down in the z axis and you're gonna and when you're gonna import them they're gonna be in correct position they do not have to be in the right scale they can be whatever size you want because we are gonna scale them automatically back in at the right position size so basically with these switches you choose whether you want to import from the GoZ or your diff or custom made inside Houdini or imported from any other. So when you import from the Gauzy, thing to remember is that you want to name them after the numbers. So which what I have done is just 12, 13, basically after numbers, anything after 10 is good because actually, it's, actually Zebra does not allow to name them just a one, one number. So. I just start with the 10 or 12 or whatever. After you have that, when you have imported it, it's actually going to give a name attribute for it. Basically with that method, we are actually sorting them. So I'm going to select this blast node. And what we are doing is just in the group, we are doing add name. And then we have a channel name. So basically what we are doing is just changing the channel number which is going to match with the name attribute of the our shapes so this is the basic, basic structure of every copying here from the everything from imported so that's the way we are separating the geometry so I think that's hope you could understand that you can start the rambling so just make sure you have numbers then just change this label so it starts from 10 have only from 12 starts in the ZBrush name started with 12 so basically going to sort them by name attribute so but of course if you want as your default we do not need this just switch to this it's going to use the default one so this is basically it the same for the second one there's nothing base save setup for this and all these options are promoted to the top of the top of the digit last so you don't have to go here so only thing you have to worry about is the go z import and the custom shapes you want to put in you put into this switcher actually there's a box some, for some reason so I'm going to delete it after that let's go back to this so that's the caps and for the secondary shape import we can go back in here the setup is same basically we are importing the same shapes and blasting them you can go back to this custom shape that they have most of the most of the options in this shape effect you going to select the same I'm just gonna go to here and then go here all of these options are green so they are on top of the digital asset as a selection so you don't have to go here to change something i have also included these and also total number of copies on top of the digital asset options so all you have to really worry about if you're importing it is from the gozi is to put down this gozi node and and pipe it into the blast. I will be removing these Gauzy import nodes though.
because if you import it, it's going to have a different name and you just have to go to it manually. So go in here and put them in here and you'll be fine. But if you want a custom shape, it's just a switcher that's also on top of the digital asset. And everything you want to do, you have to do in this box because the duplicator is actually referenced on top of the options because chances are if you make the shape you want to duplicate it so basically anything you want to make put it in here then duplicate we do some matching sizes which you don't really have to worry about I'm gonna do everything for you and then just start just going to this is and that's it and also I want to share this other one this is not promoted on top of the options but you can use it which is basically the another way you can create a secondary shape this secondary shape is just taking the curve so this is the curve we resample it every this sample we basically carve it but at the end we get this result here basically deleted half of them and create this like a dotted pattern so and we are basically just sweeping them across so also you can change how much with the group by range you can make it more we are holes between them so that's on another way but if you want to it's just another method you can create you can divide up this shape so but I'm just going to put it at the at the second one, which is going to be the default one. Also, I almost forgot to mention how can we change the secondary and primary shape. So that goes here. Basically, we have a switch that's also on top of the options. But this is just going to switch between this and this. So if you want more wires, you do everything in here. So what I have done, just basic mirroring actions. So that's how I get four, I just merge it together and we have our four, our four wire object. But of course you can change it to whatever shape you want. Or you can also always switch to the default one like that. I almost forgot to mention this so. I think that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this tool. Subscribe for more videos like this and take care.